Hey everyone, this is Jonathan for PokerVIP.com and in this video we are continuing on with the beginner series over on TonyBet. Basically if you're still not beating the game, if you're only just beating the game marginally, or if you're kind of just starting out to having a solid, decent understanding of the game, then these videos are perfect for you. I play just two tables of micro to low stakes on TonyBet. I discuss in depth why I'm doing what I'm doing and how to keep things just very simple, straightforward and well profitable so straight off in the action I three bet jacks I went about 4x I believe so I, t I went four times his open size flop I'm gonna see bet around two-thirds of pot and take it down obviously a great board for us I don't want to trap there I just want to go ahead and bet for value he's gonna have flush draws pairs ace-i floats and so on so never think about trapping there even if I had sevens full or quads there somehow I would still go ahead and bet because I actually feel his range is lots of pairs and lots of overcards, both which will generally call you on the flop when they're in position. I'd run it twice ticked there. I guess we can still leave that ticked. Auto rebuy ticked, of course. Auto post blinds, wait for big blind, and all of that good stuff. 50 and L on the left, 5 and L on the right. King 10 suited here. I think we have three bet against two opponents. Against one, I'd happily just go ahead and call. But against two, three bet is going to be better because it probably means you're going to isolate and get somebody heads up. Very rare that two people often call, or if they do, you're still going to be in position. You can also win post flop a lot by C betting and representing lots of boards or you can just pick up all that money that was in the middle there was 375 in there so seven and a half big blinds won there not bad at all some non showdown profits king jack five handed in the calf open to 150 I always open three times the big blind or if I'm on the button I will just double it and go with a min raise Generally about poker, you know, tight, aggressive will always be a good starting point and even an ending point. Lots of players just play that for a living, even at the very highest of stakes. Because obviously, pre-flop game is going to be very similar throughout, you know, like opening. But then higher up the limits and the higher level players, they then get really good at, you know, pre-flop three, 3 and 4 betting. Um, you know, ranges like that. And also just really effective post-flop turn and river play. You know, that's where they really make the money. You know, they, they make excellent turn and river decisions. But we can build up to that. Not everything happens overnight. 5 6 three, definitely fine to open under gun plus one. A7 as well. And again, why so serious on 5 and L and 50 and L, like a lot of the players do. Fold the 5 6 suit to a 3 battle position. We are going to be absolutely crushed. We're not going to hit the board enough, and we're going to be again out of position. In position, there's a high chance I would have peeled there and seen a flop. A7, I open pre flop, and then I check folded the flop. This is not a good flop for us, but. More importantly, it is a good flop for him. He's going to have lots of 10 jacks, 8 10s, queen 10s, king queens. You know, lots of hands that kind of connect with it. And they're just going to be able to, like, own us post flop. So I'm happy to just go ahead and fold there. If I had a hand like ace 9, I would go for, like, a check call. And then basically see what I wanted to do on the turn. We like to open lots of buttons, but not with complete junk, like 5 deuce. Again, we like to defend lots of big blinds, but not out of position with such a junk hand like Jack-5. Jack-10, I would call. Jack-9, I would fold. Jack-8 suited, Jack-9 suited, I would call. <coughs> it really is that defined. Lots of folding, of course. You know, I am only playing two tables. 
But the whole point of playing two tables is I can really, you know, break it down, you know, why I'm doing what I am doing, and really take our time over each decision. Don't like this sizing on the turn. Half pot on this kind of draw heavy board. You know, if you're bluffing, you want to go bigger to get them to fold their marginals. And if you're trying to get value, you want to build the pot and also charge their draws, which there are lots of. So I think this sizing is just terrible. I'd probably go like 710, 680. With set straights. Two pairs. Gets raised to 1150. Which is about a euro or two too low. Because once he calls, it'll be a slightly awkward jam because your stack will be slightly higher than the pot. And you can definitely go 3x here and make it, what, 12, 12 39, something like that would be fine. And bet one folds there. You know, if you're going to bet fold there, maybe just check your 10 or your 7. But you, know, you can definitely check your marginals in spots like that. Half pot is just saying, like, it's not strong, it's not weak, it's just kind of like a bad bet, so you are going to get attacked there a lot. You know, check raise there with a nice sort of semi bluff. Jamming lots of rivers. If you just put bet one on like lots of one pair type hands, it'd be really sexy. <clears throat> bet one might be a weaker player. You know, that could just be the simple case there. And now he has just called a three bet out of position with a slightly shorter stack. Perhaps indicative of a weaker player as well. Or it could just be a very standard play. A really small bet here by Defilia. Gets a very quick call. See, if Defilia has anything here, he really has to go about 8 or 9. So then he can like really make a nice jam on the river. So I just think this sizing is really bad. Because if bet 1 calls, there's going to be 24 in the middle. And bet 1's going to have 27 back. The idea is to sort of like bet and then jam the river to give them more of a, a price. You know, like there's lots of draws here. Nothing really improves. Whatever bet one called upon the flop is often going to call on turn. So I, I do see a lot of sizing mistakes um, in these games. And again, that is what really separates the losing or you know slightly winning players um, to the uh, crushers, of course, and the people that can move up the stakes. Minute details like betting one euro extra can really change people's perception of you and definitely change your bottom line. Power off. I do apologise, that is my Bluetooth speaker again going off. It goes off every single video. I do apologise. This is part three of four. Please check out the previous ones. We ran some bluffs, we've got some value, we've made some hero calls. It's been a really fun game to play. It's been a while since I've been on here. Six sevens a fold against two opponents. Never be mad that you would have flopped two pair. That'll just drive you insane. Got the cowboys waiting on the other table. Hopefully see it all in a bit of action. AC, I'm going to fold the small blind. I don't battle too hard small blind versus button at the moment with my weaker strong hands. Kings, I'm going to just make it 4x. We're going to try and isolate Stabilis or get it in pre-flop. He limp calls and we see a great flop of jack 8 5. And we're just going to go slightly over half pot. So that he folds, but again, really no point in slow playing. He's going to have lots of hands that connect with that board. And we just want to build that pot. We want to get the money in. You know, I'm definitely a fan of fast playing. It is hard to catch up on, you know, it's hard to catch up with value on later streets. And also, you know, you don't want to just give people equity to hit, you want to charge that equity. A9 suit, I've defended my button. We're always going to be in position no matter what, and it flops very well. 
as you can see, we now have top pair a straight draw and a backdoor straight flush draw. And we can really play it one or two ways. We can raise or we can just go ahead and call. I think on this occasion we can call. Merits for both, you know. We have top pair, we're controlling the pot. He can keep bluffing, we can get there for a pretty good price. We don't need to inflate the pot. You know, maybe out of position, I would check race here, and then I would bet turn and jam pretty much any river. Represent sets if I didn't hit my straight, or if I did, I would have built a large pot to get paid on the river. But here we're sat, I mean, if you just look at this spot, we're sat here with top pair, and an opening is straight draw, and we're getting 3 to 1. I mean, it's literally a dream life. River breaks out, and that'll be interesting if he bets. I think I'll always side on the call. Because people go like really weird here if I had like ace eight and still bet the river. Even though if he does bet and he's bet, you know, he's open under the gun, he's bet flop turn and river, it does totally scream sense. But in these games, sorry, it totally screams strength. Um, but in these games, you know, it's really quite weird to see what people do. He's over bet now. I mean, he's basically polarizing his range. He's saying like, I really have it or I really don't. Um, but like I say, I think the way people just play and the fact we block a hand like eight, ten, and five, eight. And, you know, top set that we just have to call here. Because why would he overbet with an overpair kind of thing? We just saw one pair on this straight draw heavy, so we just have to go ahead and make the call in these spots. And sadly, he had a set. King, queen, we open blind versus blind. Going to go ahead and bet flop. He's going to have some draws here. He's going to have some worse one pairs. So we're just going to bet it. And you know, when he overbet pot on the river, we're going to have lots of hands like second pair that we're going to fold. We just kind of had like the top of our range, so we had to call. If he just upped his bets like two thirds, two thirds flop and turn on the river, he could have actually bet more than that overbet and earned more money. Um, he would be raised really quite odd. He's repping two pair or a set. Not too sure we can believe him. Obviously, he can have lots of flush draws and straight draws, but. We're going to call, and on this turn, we'll probably just go ahead and fold. I mean, it's pretty much the worst turn. Imaginable. But you know on the flop, you can't just go folding top pair king kicker. But don't be scared to just fold sometimes. Not that I do. I'm definitely more of a caller than a folder, but... In certain spots, it's time to just muck and get rid and move on. Make sure you do sign up to Tony Bet, up to 80% rake back every week. A monstrous deposit bonus and a free 10 euro tournament ticket when you create an account with us. You can do so in the comments below. There is a little, a little link. Jack four, we're gonna fall. Queen 10 under the gun, we're going to fold. If I was sat in the cutoff or the button, I would certainly open. It really is that close. Queen 10 suit, I would have opened though. Jack 4 suit facing a limp. Let's go ahead and check if twice are serious uh, calls or folds. Suited hand, you know, don't really need to raise, would be out of position against both. Just kind of one of those where you want to check and just try and really hit the flop. And if you don't, you just go ahead and fold like now. Do not hang on there. If there was a heart there, I'd probably float once. Because there's certainly some implied odds of like turning two pairs trips or you know hitting a backdoor flush draw versus somebody who limps pre-flop and then pots the flop. But with just bottom pair and no hope, then really quite pointless. Set beats top top over there. Pretty unlucky for Donata, especially if he three bet pre. I didn't see the action, but if he three bet flop top top flush draw or straight draws out there, don't have a full stack. I mean, even if you do, then 
you know, not going to be easy. Fidera Jobanes. I feel like I've just said some real bad swear words there in, like, Brazilian or something. Not Brazilian, Portuguese. So I do apologise if that's offended everyone. Probably something about his mum or something. Ace King on the button. We're going to go for a raise here. Basically, just getting value. Ace King's a very strong hand. We're playing five handed. The likeliness is he doesn't have as good of a hand as this. And, you know, if he calls, he's going to be out of position. He four bets really quick. I mean,. If he calls, he's going to have a hand like tens, jacks, queens, kings, aces, ace, king, ace, queen. I mean, but if he folds and we jam, you know, we're going to win all this money in the middle. So we block aces and kings. We've been a bit active before, but a bit too quick. It's really pretty straightforward all in here. And, you know, if he folds, that's good. If he calls, then, well, we might have the best hand versus like ace, queen. Or we could just have 50% equity. We're actually going to just chop it up here. You know, the problem is by flatting pre-flop is if it comes like seven, eight, nine, jack, queen, deuce. There's just so many balls that we miss that we shouldn't really be getting involved in. So just stick it in the middle and assume that you're going to win pre-flop a good amount of the time, and post-flop you're also going to win a great amount of the time as well. That time though, we had the same hand. Ace queen, I took a stab with my gut shot, didn't work out, so gave up and let it go. God, I really have a bad habit of right clicking on my screen. I do apologize. Conte is joining the table and he didn't have weight for big blind ticked. So he blind posted. So we're going to go ahead and raise to isolate versus what we perceive as a weaker range because he had to post that blind involuntary. involuntarily. And he then min raises. Just, you know, it's all a bit odd. Now he jams. I mean, this is going to be a fold, but I think he's probably just a bit fishy and up to no good. But what can you do? Ace Jack, even against like any two, isn't crushing, so we can fold there. Sometimes sessions just do not go your way. The main thing is to keep cool and just remember that one session doesn't mean anything. You know, it only means something is if it, you know, if you let it wreck you. But if you just sort of play your game and you know grind it out, then you're going to be fine. Ace seven, we're gonna fold. I'm really not one for playing like weak aces, ace threes, ace sevens, ace sixes, off suits. I think they are like one of the ultimate killers of beginner players. You get way, way too attached to the top pair weak kicker. You miss the flop so often. I really think it can be like the death. You, Event 244 loves to raise C bets and turn bets. It really is quite aggressive. They feel a nearly bet pot there on a 3 8 10 and then just snap folded. Very interesting. Blind post here by Kalig448. Always note this. I spoke every session about auto post. Wait for big blind. It's going to save you just spewing money away. A little bit of a limp fest here. And I'm just going to check. I mean, I think even if I made it 5 here, we're not going to get everyone to fold. And King 7 off out of position just ain't going to be, ain't going to be a winner. 3-4, even though we get a good price, I'm not going to make it my blind. It's out of position. This D grand guy could raise. I mean, it's just pointless, even though you're getting that good price. Fought in my gut shot and overcard versus a pot size bet from bet one. Bet one, more like bet pot. <laughs> oh. By the way, leave any comments below if you do enjoy this or dislike it. Thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe to the channel. 
if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Poker VIP, then you probably already know what to do. Something suited here, I just don't think Juve Event 2 is ever folding. Um, usually I would go ahead and like raise this and just see lots of folds pre or you know power through post flop, but he's just like limp calling like 100%. I feel so I'm just gonna limp here and see a flop. You know, seven ten suited isn't that bad even out of position, so whatever. Getting a great price, of course. Flop absolutely nothing, so just gonna check fold. Turn a pair, but just gonna check. I mean, seven ten on a three eight king seven board. Do I want to start betting it? Probably not. And I think I can even just go ahead and ditch my hand pretty easily there. I really am sorry about the right clicking. I have to stop. Queen six off on the button. We're gonna fold now. I always say I'd fold queen six. Sometimes I would open queen six if both blinds literally were like the biggest nits ever and just folded all the time. Then I'd definitely go ahead and start opening it. But for now, we can just go ahead and give it up. Do six and king nine into the book. King nine suit I would have opened here, four handed in the cutoff. King nine also is going to be a fold. Kings versus tens here. Hey, once he hits that ten, it's going to be really hard for D Grand to win when I'm holding one of his kings. Unlucky for him there, but you know, tens will beat kings two out of ten times in the long run, so that's one of those times. Nine deuce, we're going to fold on the button. Three handed. So, yeah, I mean, a losing session. And uh, we never edit or pre record or re record videos here. It is just a typical session, and everyone has to learn from it the hard way sometimes. Here, going to go ahead and squeeze with King Jack against two opponents. I mean, opening the button, lots of people do it, could have anything. Calling the small blind doesn't represent any strength. In position, King Jack, I think we're just going to go ahead and raise it up. And he calls out a position, and sadly we get a terrible flop. He could have literally anything, so I think an all-in here is absolutely fine. I mean, if we check, we're just giving up, and we just pray to hit a king or a jack. But he could have a hand like 10 jack and call us. He could fold a hand like ace-5, so let's go ship it in and hope he folds. But if he calls, then we can definitely have the best hand or improve with a king or a jack. You know, might just have like 9-10 here. He has queen-3. Wow. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just always play good and the money will come to you. I promise that. Uh, we're going to sit out here anyway. We're, we're leaving the game. We're leaving the video in a minute, so we'll call it a video here. We'll end on a high. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Please leave some comments. This was John for PokerVIP.com, and I will see you for part four. Goodbye.